can't they create their own exchange they already have their own power plant they can buy it and present a lot of competition to iex hey everyone welcome to today's video so take a look at this picture and this is a picture that you will be able to relate with so the person in question was charged approximately 5000 rupees for taking a local trip in mumbai so he tweeted about it saying that you know what i could have rather taken a flight ticket to goa and he is absolutely right you might have observed something very similar happening to zomato that nowadays when you order food from zomato rather than ordering it directly from restaurant you could be charged in excess of 30% so you are not saving money any more by buying stuff on zomato let me know in the comment box if you agree with that so what exactly is happening with these aggregator models is there something off so i will reveal my answer along the video but on today's video what i am going to do is that i am going to analyze an aggregator monopoly stock in the energy space so which stock am i talking about i am talking about iex or india energy exchange it is a monopoly stock this is the monopoly that it holds that it holds more than 90% of business in short term power trading in india the stock has fallen approximately 50% 50% from its peak so now you might be salivating you might be saying that you know what okay probably monopoly stock india energy sector is growing this company is trading at a 50% discount should you go and buy it should you not go and buy it i will present all the facts in a very simple easy to understand language also a very quick shout out to our sponsors for today which is small case it is a wonderful platform for stock investing especially if you are a beginner so you can do thematic based or theme based investing via small cases i have collated some of my favorite small cases in the description box so you can go and check them out so let us get the discussion started first and foremost and very easy to understand language we will see what is it that iex or india energy exchange actually does so here is a very important slide that will help you understand about iex's business so essentially what happens in terms of electricity generation i am oversimplifying it for your understanding so on the electricity generation side you have companies like tata power adani power they generate electricity so they are the ones producing electricity be it hydroelectricity be it solar electricity be it thermal electricity electricity so these companies are generating a lot of electricity now when they generate the electricity it does not get to us directly that it's not as if that adani power is generating electricity they will sell it to us directly in the middle there are transmission and distribution companies they are buying electricity from the suppliers of electricity and they in turn give it to end consumers like you and me so this is the simple value chain of how electricity is produced and distributed in india that you have generators of electricity or suppliers of electricity on one side then there are these middlemen which are called as distributors mostly these are state owned companies or government owned companies and they in turn supply electricity to end consumers now in this value chain what end up happening is that these suppliers enter into different type of contracts with these buyers for example adani power or tata power might do a five year contract with rajasthan government saying that we are going to supply you electricity or provide you electricity at 5 rupee per unit so that becomes a long term contract and that is one way in which an agreement is finalized between these two parties so this is a very important point so right now in the indian market 90% of the contracts are long term contracts so these are blocked for 4 5 years 10 years sometimes also so these are fairly long term contracts and it creates a series of problems for suppliers and buyers because sometimes the energy should be provided at a higher price because there is sudden surge in demand for electricity for example right now in india there is energy crisis and energy shortage but if a supplier would have already logged in long term prices then they cannot in is the prices so this leads to a spot market or a short term market and that is where iex comes into an equation so many a times these suppliers want to sell electricity at its current viable prices so let's say that they are producing 500 megawatt of energy today and they want the recent reliable prices on it so they will go to an exchange like iex where a bidding will take place by these buyers and they will fix on a price so this is the short term energy trading market which a company like iex supports very important point to note down is that right now 90% of contracts are logged into long term in india only 10% are logged into short term and iex is facilitating what type of contracts short term contracts so it's basically an aggregator or an exchange where buyers and suppliers meet and they decide the price of the electricity for a very short term so this is the entire model for iex now something magical started happening post 2020 with iex stock so for example this stock was at roughly 43 rupees and it went all the way up to 200 and 95 almost 300 rupees which is almost six times increase in a matter of one year now why did this happen the simple answer can be derived from this snippet there were rumors that these long term contracts are going to go down in value now and a lot of short term contracts are going to come into play and as a result 
companies like iex are going to benefit a lot so because of which iex stock started gaining a lot of momentum it was also predicted that the long term contract market will fall to 50 60% in total and rest of the market will be made by short term contracts only so therefore companies like iex will benefit a lot now this was not just fluff news it helped a lot of buyers of electricity save a ton of money for example here is a snippet which shows that andhra pradesh government by using iex exchange they were able to save roughly 2400 crores so of course the business model is solid there is no problem in terms of business model per se there is a legitimate need of figuring out the short term prices of electricity and companies like iex are very solid when it comes to doing that right now their clientele comprises of these companies you can take a look at it that they have a lot of customers on their platform there are two major players in this short term energy trade market but iex market penetration is roughly 95% which shows that these companies their existing clients prefer to trade over iex vis a vis the other firms So if I have to summarize the video so far there are two specific reasons why a company like IEX grew and it might continue to grow so the first reason is that the total contractual value is shifting from long term to short term and even if 20 30% market shifts a company like IEX is going to benefit a lot second key reason for their growth is that the energy generation market is fragmented for example if you consider big power companies adanis or ambanis they can directly go to rajasthan government and sell them electricity so here suppliers and buyers of electricity are directly entering into a contract and they don't need a middle player like iex to support that but there is a lot of fragmented energy that is being built for example a lot of companies are generating smaller volumes of solar electricity hydroelectricity etc and they need an exchange where they can go so that that exchange can help them find buyers so from that particular perspective a company like iex has great growth potential now does that mean that you should go and invest no please listen to the entire video so this brings us to the second part that what about the fundamentals of the company that are they sound are they low debt high debt what do the sales and profit numbers look like so let us take a very quick look there for example if you take a look at sales it was at roughly 36 crores and now it has reached 426 crore within a matter of 10 years so almost 12 time increase in sales which is massive what about profits profit again have gone up by a lot what about the size of the company so this is not a huge huge company in terms of market caps so there is a chance that it can go to 4x 5x 10x if you take a look at roce the roce is 65% almost if you take a look at debt to equity it is almost a debt free company so the fundamental sounds so good so good that you should literally go sell your house and invest all your money into this stock no i am kidding please don't do that please continue to listen to this video so here are three major problems that iex's business model has the first and foremost problem can be explained by understanding porter's five forces so porter's five forces is a very powerful strategic framework so first and foremost problem with iex's business is that it does not have control for example if you imagine iex to be in the middle between powerful buyers of electricity which are huge discom state governments etc etc and suppliers these might be companies like adanis and ambanis and big power players the point is that iex does not have a lot of negotiating power either with these people or either with these people now juxtapose this model with ola or uber now ola and uber are applications which are sitting in the middle they are connecting taxi drivers on one side and customers like us on the other side now we as customers have very limited power we do not collude together we do not form unions we can not do much except for going on social media and start criticizing the firm and this is precisely the reason why companies like ola uber can jack up their prices whenever they feel like and do whatever they want on the flip side there are taxi unions but unfortunately here they don't have any tech oriented power they cannot build their own tech platforms they cannot do much yes from time to time they can go on hartal and do a bunch of stuff but the point is that these people still need ola and uber to get discovered and connect them to customers but in iex's model what is happening is that even these people are very powerful if they want they can collude so to say and even these people are also very powerful so let me do a thought exercise with you and let's imagine that iex becomes a highly profitable company which goes 5x in size then why do you think that someone like adanis and ambanis will not be able to replicate this model can't they create their own exchange they already have a ton of production capacity sitting here with them they already have their own power plant they can buy it they can create their own exchange and present a lot of competition to iex and on the flip side here we are talking about major state governments they are directed by whom they are most of the times directed by the central government or through their internal policies how much to buy when to buy whom to buy from etc etc there is a lot of red tapeism so it's not guaranteed that they will continue to buy from iex for 
for whatever reasons even if they have to procure electricity ineffectively for whatever reasons they will still do it now i'll not say anything further you guys are smart you will be able to figure out what i'm trying to say all i'm simply trying to say is that there is no obligation for either these people or these people to go and trade on iex both these parties are much much stronger compared to iex now a related point here is that iex stock gave a lot of run up on the assumption that we will move away from long term power arrangements what if that does not play out then what is plan b for iex can they do anything if suppliers and buyers continue to engage on long term contracts there is no reason for a company like iex to grow very fast in fact as per latest quarterly filing iex's trading volume fell by minus 1% this was largely due to the fact that how contracts were structured now this will become a highly complicated video if i get into the details of how these electricity contracts are structured but to cut the long story short these generators or suppliers can continue to engage on long term power contracts as per the market dynamics so it's not guaranteed that this 90% thing of long term power contracts is going to fall to 50% as the current market scenario tells us now the second key problem you might have already figured out is the regulation problem that power is a highly regulated industry both at a state level both at a central level government tells you how much you can sell the power for government decides how much subsidy to give to power distribution power production companies government decides different public sector schemes that sub support these power companies on top of that power is a commodity good people want free power for example a classic case is punjab where government decided to provide everyone 300 units of free electricity on public money so power or electricity is a deeply regulated political tool and government has monopoly on this business not iex with one regulation change a company like iex will completely go away now you'll say rakshad that is a very pessimistic scenario why are you saying it why think about it this way here you have suppliers of electricity they are mostly loss making companies they take on a lot of debt. Right? here you have buyers of electricity these are discom companies and there is a scheme called as uday scheme please go and watch it i had made a separate video on that uday scheme was a mechanism where the government of india subsidized these discom companies they were power distribution loss making companies they subsidize these companies by using public money so these people are not making any money these people are not making much money and suddenly if the platform starts making a lot of money what do you think the government is going to do they are going to start their own exchange or ask their friends here you can guess the names of the friends who would be starting these type of exchanges it will be fun for me to read it but please understand that if this business becomes highly profitable and big there is absolutely zero reason why the government will not run such an exchange on its own or ask one of their friends to do it which friends there are two big friends in india right now so you can guess the names of those friends so okay so this brings us to the third systematic problem with iex stock which is called as a value capture problem now a classic case of value capture problem is the paytm model that paytm wallet is a wonderful thing it literally started the cashless trend in india that paytm karo bunch of other different different things it literally created a lot of value to people because people did not have to carry money in their pockets they could have simply carried their phone used paytm to make transaction and be done with it so was paytm able to create a lot of value yes but was it able to make any money the answer is no because the wallets business of paytm was not very profitable for them the take rate or the money that they were making through people interacting on their platform it was very very low for them to even break even so as a result a company like paytm started experimenting with a bunch of different things this is the same problem that iex in my opinion is going to face that yes it is connecting suppliers and buyers on short term contracts creating a lot of value for everyone you need such a business model so they will be creating value no doubt out about that but will they be able to keep that money that is the simple question and according to me beyond a scale they will not be able to do it because the moment this cash pile of money grows big again some of the government's friend will come up and create a parallel structure there is no power here because all these buyers are controlled by whom they are controlled by the government so this brings us to the start of the conversation that why is it that ola uber zomato are squeezing customers now because that is what their business model is this is how an aggregator platform is supposed to function and there are three stages first and foremost create dependence on the aggregator platform for example customers and taxi provider depend on ola and uber second stage is that become a monopoly once you have become a monopoly and you have made people dependent on you that is when you squeeze margins so as a result companies like ola and uber right now are able to squeeze these margins so to say are they still profitable no can they become profitable in the future it depends on will they be able to maintain this monopoly status or someone else is going to come in and disrupt them or people will move away from this model it depends on a series of different things but energy as an aggregator will that work in india i highly doubt it that at least from a long term sustainable basis it is very 
very unlikely that a low margin, highly regulated business, a company will be able to grow really, really big. So have I ever been an investor in IEX? The answer is no, and I do not plan on investing in it, irrespective of what the prices are. What is it that you should be doing? Please make your own call. There is a final thought that I will leave you with in terms of pricing of IEX, and this has to do with the PE ratio. That a normal PE for something like IEX would be 25, 26. These are the type of stocks where you should do PE analysis. Right now, despite a 50% correction in the stocks, still the stock PE is roughly 48. So according to me, it is still overvalued. Can I be wrong? Of course I can be wrong, but I would not be buying such a stock even at a PE of 40. Why? Because from a long-term perspective, IEX will have to undertake a lot of challenges and come out victorious on it, despite all the government regulations and government friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press the like button and I'll see you soon.